Hey everybody, this video is a response to Monoxide. Uh, this is my top 10 favorite wrestlers of all time. Uh, I guess I will, like he did, explain it kind of in detail why they're either so high or so low and why they're my, in my top 10 favorites. Uh, number 10 is Hayabusa. Uh, I've seen his exploding cage death matches on YouTube and from like FMW in the 90s. And I just have so much respect for how he busted his ass in the ring for all those years and that it, he actually ended up in a wheelchair for uh, botched springboard moonsault or botched lion salt basically. He landed right on his head so he gave it all and he was really entertaining. His matches were awesome and he's the reason I actually started being into Japanese wrestling and kind of broke through the sports entertainment barrier let's say. Uh, at number nine, this might surprise you that it's kind of low, but uh, it's actually number nine is Ric Flair. Ric Flair has been in the business since 1979. If you're a wrestling fan, you would know who Ric Flair is. You know his history. The reason Ric Flair is at number nine is because I started watching wrestling in April 2006, so I haven't seen too much of his career actually like in the making. But he's really entertaining, and it's just phenomenal. Like, the, the cage match from SmackDown last night would be a great example of how someone who's almost, like, 59 years old can put on amazing matches still. And finally, he's getting what he deserves, and I think he deserves far more in getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. So he's my number nine, and my number eight is Sabu. He is just so hardcore. His matches in the old ECW were just phenomenal, and he did some really awesome crap in the new ECW, too. He's the reason I actually like hardcore wrestling, so a lot of the reasons some of the guys are on here is because they helped me kind of just... I, they kind of informed me when I was, like, a new, really new fan that there was other stuff out there besides WWE. This was, like, when I just had like an antenna and I just got like channel 12 and saw Smackdown I didn't even know there was a TNA or a Raw or anything so Sabu just the multitude of injuries and risks he was willing and able to put himself through just all those injuries getting dropped on his head by Benoit uh, all those like suicidal things he's like broken so many bones and stuff Anyways, he's the reason I got into hardcore wrestling, and I am a big fan of the old ECW, even though I was just, like, a toddler when it was at its peak in, like, 90, the mid-90s. Uh, number seven is Triple H. Triple H, uh, the reason he's actually at number seven is because I love, I love DX, and I think he's so hilarious on the mic. His, his match style is pretty entertaining, but I would have put him higher if it wasn't for his backstage politics and, um, well, his moves are kind of repetitive. You'll see, like, the knee strikes sometimes, the spine buster, the punch and get up, punch and get up thing, and uh, increasingly weak pedigree, but... Triple H is just phenomenal, and if he didn't have the backstage politics thing, I think he would have, like, a fan base, like, five times bigger, probably. All the smart, like, smart marks or smart fans would go for Triple H then. Uh, number six is Steve Austin. Uh, I was only about in, like, first or second grade when the Attitude Era came on, but, you know, he still makes occasional appearances, and thanks to the internet and people like... Uh, take a look around 22 posting Attitude Era videos. I was able to see how awesome Steve Austin was and I just wished he would come back. Uh, he, he has one of the best gimmicks undoubtedly in WWE or WWF history. Wow, looking at the timer, I might have to do a part two on this. Okay, Start to speed it up a little bit. Anyways, Stone Cold Rules. Uh, number five is The Undertaker. Undertaker's been in there since 1992, I believe. 15 and 0 at WrestleMania. His moves are entertaining. His character is incomparable. And 
he was one of the first people I ever saw when I got into wrestling. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I'm, if I'm speeding up, I'm sorry. I have about slightly under five minutes to do the rest of this. Number four is Chris Jericho. Uh, he's his return was just phenomenal, and he he started he stopped wrestling. He went on that sabbatical about six months before I started watching it. But his matches are so entertaining. He's so good at technical moves. He's athletic. He's uh, he's just phenomenal. And I've seen some of his matches outside of Japan, like WWE and like Japan and stuff. The guy can pretty much put on a good show in any environment, it seems. He, like he can carry people. He's just got amazing moves. Running Enziguri, Lion Salt. He does the springboard moonsault better than anyone else I've seen. Watching wrestling for about three years now, I've noticed other wrestlers do it too, but he, he does it the best in my opinion. Uh, Chris Jericho, I saw his original debut and it was just amazing, like Minoxide said. He's able to do promos with The Rock and stuff. He's just so original and he's so great on the mic. He's pretty funny too, like... Even in his return, people thought he was going to be watered down, but he was still really funny, making fun of, like, Santino Morella and stuff. Okay, so I love Chris Jericho, anyways. He's my number four. Number three is Rob Van Dam. God, I wish he would come back. I miss him so much. He is, in my opinion, the best thing to come out of the original ECW and to actually still be good in WWE. The Five Star Frog Splash is awesome. I love his character and I love how innovative a lot of his moves are. I haven't seen anyone else do anything even like the Rolling Thunder. So the main reason I like RVD is because of his ability to incorporate weapons and like his kicks and stuff and how awesome he is in hardcore matches and basically just his flexibility and Basically, I like RVD because of his wrestling ability. He never had too, too, too strong of a character. Like, if you look at Rock, his character was, like his name, pretty much rock solid. But RVD just kind of had this laid-back thing going on. So, RVD is my number three, and... God, I hope he's back soon. Number two, even though he got suspended for 60 days and fucked up big time with the drug use or whatever he did... It's Jeff Hardy. I This guy is just amazing. All the tag team matches, the TLC matches, the improvement over the years. Even if Jeff has his issues, you have to admit he is simply amazing. He, I One of the re, other reasons I like him, call me a spot monkey if you will, but I love his jumps off thing. The whisper in the wind off the cage, the swanton off the scaffolding and all those old jumps he did in like 2001 and 2000 and stuff and <coughs> <coughs> I just love the energy he just gave me like an energy and he got me like pumped up into his matches I just love how enjoyable Jeff Hardy is okay my number one pick is the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels I have about a minute and 11 seconds left, so I'm just going to kind of speed up on this. Shawn Michaels just has the best character I've ever seen. He's He has the ability to carry pretty much anyone, injured or not. He will put on as good of a match as he would otherwise. He's been there for so, so many years, and his wrestling ability hasn't diminished. To see somebody to be able to go over the ropes like he does and still be able to slingshot and somersault and do all his entertaining elbow drops and theatrics and the kip up and when he's in his mid 40s, it just shows you how great Shawn Michaels is. He's a legend and hopefully not in my lifetime. Well, okay, I revoke that lifetime statement. That was kind of stupid. Anyways, just hopefully we'll see him in the Hall of Fame someday, because God, know, God knows he deserves it. Shawn Michaels, in my opinion, is the best wrestler of all time. Thank you for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, Slingblade98 out.